All right, hey guys, how are you doing? Um, in this video, I'm gonna talk about regression analysis and I'm gonna do it step by step. So we're gonna take a look at a problem here and we're gonna do all these things down here to make sure that we do a thorough analysis. And I, I'm not gonna talk about some of the other things that might happen, um, but I will reference them for things that you'll do later on. So, um, so here's our problem here, and I'm not going to read through this too much because I only have about 15 minutes. I don't want to make this video too long. So I'm going to let you go ahead and read through the problem, copy things down. But basically, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we've got an age group, and this is the media, mid, midpoint of the age group, and then this is the median six-minute walking distance for uh, the boys that completed this test to see how uh, long they can walk in six minutes on a hard surface. What we're going to do is... We're going to take these data and we're going to sketch a scatter plot. So that's our first thing we're going to do. And sometimes we might want to do a histogram of each set of data to just to see how each of these sets look. And we'll do that in just a second, just to see what these uh, uh, if they're skewed or, or you know what the statistics say about each of these separate data. Then we're going to go and we're going to look and we're going to create the uh, least squares regression model. We're going to check the residual plot of this to determine if the LSR model is appropriate. If it's not appropriate, then we might need to do some data straightening, which is in a new, another video later on down the line. Right now, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to determine R, the correlation coefficient, and R squared, the, the coefficient of determination. Describe the association and the regression in context. So this is kind of the meat of the whole situation here. We're going to describe the strength direction in the form. We're going to find the coefficient of determination and, and write that in context. We'll find the slope and the y-intercept and write those in the context of the situation. And then the next step is to use the regression to make a prediction, which I'll show you that. And then finally, um, if necessary, compare your prediction with the actual data that in, that's in there and then determine the residual to see what it means in the context of your situation. So, whew, I, that's a lot of talking. Let's get to work here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna enter these into my calculator and I'm using the TI Inspire. Um, if, you, if you have a TI, 84 uh, hopefully your teacher or instructor has shown you how to use an 84 uh, plus if you're using some other form like uh, like google docs um, google sheets or uh, or uh, spss or mini tab or whatever those other ones are um, it'll look a lot the same with your spreadsheet so let's go ahead and um, enter in your i put this as age and then i put this as walk so this is the walking distance so this is a spreadsheet and I'm going to um, create a new data and statistics page. I'm going to come down here and we're going to have our age as our X variable. Okay, so it doesn't show us much because uh, there aren't that many uh, data values for this problem. So we're not really going to do a histogram or a dot plot. And then walk is going to be our Y value, our Y variable, because we're going to, you know, we're trying to decide how far someone can walk depending on their age. And this right here, we're going to look at this. This is fairly linear. Okay, so, um, you know, it's it's fairly linear. Let's go and, and make our regression to see. And then we would, we would draw this if we needed to. But we're going to go and make our regression. So we're going to go menu, analyze, regression. And we're going to use this one, the A plus BX. Okay, so now we have our regression e expression. All right, so I'm going to take this information. And I'm going to uh, cut and paste it. So... We'll do this and uh, oops, cut and paste it into my screen here. Right. And we have our graph here. So now uh, we've done what we've done is we've done basically we've done number one and two. And we don't want to leave two like this. We're going to want to write it in the context of uh, what we're dealing with. So remember that when we're when I talk about context, we're talking about you know what what situation is going on. In this case, we're talking about the distance, the median distance that they can walk in six minutes, and the uh, age. So we're going to write our least squares model as um, medi median walking distance. hat equals 492.798 plus 
times the uh, midpoint of the age group. So we're just going to put this as age group. Okay, so this is our least squares regression written in context of the situation we're dealing with. So now we've got to check the residual plot to determine if this is appropriate. So let's go ahead and do that. So um, it's easy enough to do in, in our calculator. So we're going to hit menu, analyze. Let's look at the residuals. Let's so, show the residual plot. Okay, so now we've, we see the residual plot. Um, remember the residual is the difference between the point and the line, the actual and predicted. Okay, so um, here's our residual plot. Now there's no, I, you know, you're really making a stretch if you think that it's going like this and this is a curve. That's not really a curve. We have three points that are below the zero. We have a couple points above the zero. There aren't very many data values in this data set, so um, this is pretty spread out. Uh, you know, it's, it's all pretty um, scattered. So if we have a scattered residual plot, then we know that the linear model is appropriate. Okay, so back here, we can say, yes, in fact, it is appropriate. So we know that our linear model is appropriate. Sorry about that, guys. My pen's not working right. All right, so it is appropriate. We don't have to worry about um, dealing with some curved data. Now we have to determine r and r squared. So <clears throat> to do that, we're going to go back to our calculator here. And we're going to go back to our spreadsheet. And over here, I'm going to hit, and we've got to go into open space. So we're going to go menu, statistics, stat calculations, linear regression. All right, so our X list was age, our Y list was walking, and we're going to save this, we're going to save our regression equation into F1, actually. All right, I must already have something in my calculator in F1, so I'll just save it in F2. And the results will come out in D. All right. So now here are our results. Here is our R and R, our R and our R squared. So our R, R, R. I sound like a dog, right? R, R, R. Um, uh, so we're going to go ahead and write R equals 0.97. Okay. So R equals 0.97. And R squared was... 94.8 okay 94.8 and we're going to write this in terms of its percentage okay 94.8 percent and we saw that from here you know it's just 0.9478 but we're going to write it as a percent okay so um the residuals are already calculated we'll come back to that in just a second okay so uh, let's look at this picture. We're going to talk about the strength direction of form. So let's go and describe this in context. And I'll try to write as much as, you know what, I'll try to write it down here. Okay, so um, we'll say there is a strong positive linear association or correlation in this case right between um, the median walking distance and the age group um, we we'll want to say the midpoint of the age group we want to make sure that they're uh, quantitative data, right? Okay, so we said strong positive linear correlation. Okay, so A, check. Coefficient of determination. All right, 94.8% of the differences or the variability in walking distance can be explained by a 
age group. Because remember that for R squared, it's the percent of differences in Y that can be explained by X. All right, so coefficient determination, check. The slope, our slope here is 14.76, okay? So, um, on a, okay, so we're gonna say on average, okay? We always wanna make sure we say on average. All right, on average, I know my penmanship is not great here, guys. On average, um, for every year, increase in age the child's walking distance increases by 14.76 meters we're talking about meters right I believe this was in meters. Yes, in meters. Okay, so um, so that's what it means. Increases because it's a positive slope, and it's 4.7 meters um, increase for every one increase in the age group. Okay, so there's the slope. Y-intercept. So you know, a y-intercept in this case, it's kind of not exactly true here, but we would um, we would expect. Okay, because we would expect, this is what expected to happen, we would expect um, an average walking distance of 492.8 meters for a midpoint age, midpoint age of zero years okay so let's go ahead and so we did all these so let's go ahead and talk about using the regression to make a prediction so what we're gonna do is instead of making a prediction I'm gonna go ahead and find the residual which basically uses the same thing for uh, for a midpoint of 10 so in my calculator I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll do a new page and I'll do a, a calculator page. And I want to find uh, my value for um, a, a age of 10. So what I just did here is I know that I stored my regression in F2. Um, okay, because that's what I did here when I did my function, when I did my uh, regression. It asked me where I stored it and I wanted to store it in F2. Um, so I'm going to just plug 10 in. To my regression expression okay so uh, the calculator says it's 640.31 so basically what I'm saying here guys is that uh, my my uh, formula here my formula tells me that for a median age of uh, midpoint of 10 so we're looking uh, here okay my predicted value, okay, uh, representative age hat, okay, my predicted value is going to be 600, and what did the guy say here again? 640.43, okay, so 640.43. So basically what I'm saying here is that um, my predicted value is 640.43, my actual 667. So what happens is when I subtract these and get my residual, my residual is going to be positive. So my line actually predicted less than what my actual really was. My actual was greater than my predicted. So I underestimated what, um, what the distance was. All right, so that is everything about residual regressions that you need to know now. Um, hopefully this helps, and it kind of rounds out everything that we've been doing in class. Um, so there you go. That's it for now. We'll talk to you soon, and we'll see you later, or I uh, hope this helped. Bye.